Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I just want to say that this video is actually dedicated to Amy McCaw. So Amy, this is for you. And what are we talking about today? Well, this is a bit of a bundle review. So we were reviewing four individual books collectively, um, or rather volumes. So I'm talking about The Vampire Diaries by L.J. Smith, the original um, series. Uh, which was published the first three volumes, that is, in 1991, and the fourth volume in 1992. The first three volumes comprise of The Awakening, The Struggle, and The Fury, and volume four, Dark Reunion. Or, I've heard, though, that it also is just called The Reunion in some parts of the world, but we're going to refer to it as Dark Reunion. So, what are these books about? They are about a girl named Elena who was, uh, uh, even after now just over a few years of losing her parents, she's still struggling with, uh, with that loss. And um, Elena is like the most popular girl at school. She is referred to as, you know, the queen of Robert E. Lee or the queen of the school. And she can basically have anything she wants and is used to, you know, getting anything she wants. She's very much kind of like a Cordelia character in many ways in, you know, the beginning of these books. And then arrives Stefan Salvatore, a newcomer. He's the new boy at school, he's mysterious, he's attractive, all the girls are fawning over him, and Elena, of course, sets her sights immediately on him, and she's going to have him no matter what. Well, he ends up shunning her, and that concocts a whole plan with her friends, Meredith and Bonnie. Uh, but at the same time as all this is going on, there are some mysterious attacks happening around town, and uh, some bizarre things. Elena's friend, Bonnie, s discovers that she is descended from druids, and that she is a psychic. So as Elena enacts her plan to get Stefan, uh, these strange occurrences and attacks uh, start coming closer to home as Elena grows closer to Stefan and learns his dark secrets. I'm being rather vague, but that's kind of the setup for the first three volumes, because the first three volumes of this series basically act as one book. Um, the only things that really set them different is, of course, each part has a name, like, you know, The Awakening, The Struggle, The Fury. Uh, but they all bleed right into each other, or pick up right where the other one left off. And the only thing that does separate them besides that title thing is that they have uh, kind of reintroductions for each character. You get, you know, a brief description and who this character is, just as a reminder, since it was published uh, originally in, you know, four separate volumes. The whole series, that is. Uh, but since then, there have been some uh, bind-ups. You usually get books one and two together and books three and four together. Or you may find online there's a bundle like what I have actually is the, um, the bundle. Uh, that's the uh, Love at First Bite, I think it's called, or something like that bundle, which uses the TV series covers. I'm not altogether crazy about that because I would rather have like uh, the original covers or the newer ones shown or something. Not the, not the new, newer ones, the ones from around the time the TV show had come out. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> getting back into the story, I know I, I'm being vague with it, but that's the general setup, and if I were to tell too, too much more, that would be a lot of spoiler territory for these. Because they literally just bleed into each other. It's just a, it's an ongoing story, except for number four. You will have had to have read the first three to understand what's going on in number four, because it does pick up six months later and kind of has its own uh, its own villain, its own set of things that's happening. Whereas the first several books culminate to one event. So these characters, I will confess, I had a hard time with the first book, and I've heard a lot of people also have kind of some issues uh, with these book. I think books mostly at the beginning, I think, um, and I can see why. The characters at the start of this are not very likable. There's only a few that I would say. Uh, Matt Honeycutt, for sure, he's a very likable and uh, kind of level-headed person. He's very human. He does have his flaws, but, you know, he's pretty level-headed and stuff for the most part, and he does, you know, care, 
which does dictate some of the things he does throughout the books. Um, and then there's uh, Stefan, which he was very interesting to me, especially in the first volume, when we're getting to know our buddy, uh, because the first volume was almost, it, it, was, it starts out a little slow, and it was almost a little boring in spots, at least for me anyway, but it did pick up uh, as things started getting going. And um, Stefan was one of the things that kept me going during the first volume, because of the vampire stuff, you know, big shocker, he's a vampire. Um, with all the vampire stuff and uh, going from his point of view, that kind of got me interested, especially the flashbacks to the uh, the Renaissance period, 500 years earlier, when Stefan and his brother Damon are both human beings. Which the character of Damon, if you are familiar with the TV series that was based off these books, you'll know who Damon is. He's, you know, Stefan's older brother, and that he's also a vampire. He is in these books. Most of the characters from the TV series are, uh, or at least the main characters anyway, are mostly in the books. So, But as the books continued, Volume 2 was definitely better uh, than, uh, and more exciting than Volume 2. Uh, one and volume three was really good. It was very action-packed. Things were really rolling um, it, it, You definitely have to read these all together. So you had the first three that uh, You know do function as one one story and they and it has its you know its end and it really could have just probably stopped there Because it, it, it's just it's a full story right there Then you get book four which is completely its own thing. So it's kind of like I guess you'd say, like, book two, really. But um, that one uh, introduces werewolves to it, and you get more of the witch stuff and more of the magic stuff, because, slight spoiler here, Bonnie's a witch. If you didn't know that, or you haven't seen the TV series, Bonnie is a witch, but she does have psychic tendencies, because apparently psychics in this, similar, in, in some ways anyway, to the, the Anne Rice witches, Psychics are witches, and witches are psychics, so. But anyway, so we've already mentioned that there was an adaptation, and, you know, it was, it came out in, I think it was, was it 2009, I think the show came out? I was a big fan of the show, but I had to watch it on DVD, and I didn't get into the show till like, I think during season three. I really liked the show and stuff, and I had always been kind of curious about the books. To be honest here, when, um... The TV show came out, I thought the books were pretty new because I'd seen them in bookstores, you know, not too long before the show existed, and they had the, the covers of the time. I had no idea these books were just a little older than me. So I was like, wow, that, that really surprised me. And I'd been, you know, curious, like I said, of the books, but I hadn't, you know, didn't ever pick them up till, you know, this year. Um, I did have this set, the set though that I have, I had bought three years ago or so on Kindle and just hadn't, you know, read them till maybe it was even four, I'm not sure. But it's been, some, they've been sitting in my Kindle library for quite a while and then just last year, somewhere on my bookshelf, I think it's on this shelf here, or maybe it's the one up there, I don't know. Um, I have, oh no, they're on the shelf, they're down here because I have books I haven't put on my shelves yet because I need to probably do some rearrangement or something. Um, I forgot, they're down here. <laughs> I have the Return Trilogy, which is the uh, sequel series. So, but I had heard that the books were different than the show. And they are. The show definitely goes off and does its own thing, though in the first few episodes you do see a lot of things they adapted right from the books. And they've changed some characters, combined some characters, they've moved relationships of some characters around. The character of Caroline um, in the books, she and Elena are utter enemies. They used to be friends. They're competing to be, you know, the, the most popular girl now at school. In the TV series, Elena and Caroline are friends, sometimes frenemies, but they're ha they have a completely different relationship than the character, than these two characters in the books. And also the character of Elena, uh, looks nothing like the character on the TV show. She... Elena in the books, she's blonde with blue eyes and she's very fair skin. Kind of like how Caroline looks in the TV series is how Elena looks in the books. And uh, like hardly anybody I think even remotely resembles 
their book counterparts in the television series, but I was a big fan of the show. It kind of went some places toward the end of its run that weren't so great, but um, I will say this. I don't remember if I'd seen this in an article. I was in high school at the time online and had recently started watching the show or I had caught on to some of the things and kind of put this together that there is a comparison to Dark Shadows here because you have the vampires um, returning to this town in the TV show that is because in the TV show they became vampires during the Civil War. In the books they're from uh, Italy from 500 years ago. So, um, they've never been to this town. But in the TV show, you have vampires returning to the town. They wear rings, which are their, if you know what the rings are used for. Um, same in the books. There's the, uh, girl who looks like their lost love from the past. And, um, I will say this is a bit of a spoiler for the TV show, but I'm not going to tell you what season it is. There is an immortal phoenix, similar, similar, to Laura Collins and Dark Shadows, but not the same. So, I mean, there's even more similarities right there. Plus, you get werewolves, witches. Of course, there's the vampires. I don't think there was ever any zombie characters. Um, and moving between dimensions, you know, similar to jumping through parallel worlds. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of similarities to Dark Shadows. And... Um, one of the earlier volumes of the book, uh, of the books, no, sorry, it was volume four, I think. I'd seen, uh, when I was flipping through on Goodreads, looking at the different covers, there was one that said in, in its corner, um, because I ended up kind of blowing it up a little bit, it, uh, compared the books to Dark Shadows. So even there was the similarities back then, you can see the same similarities except for a few. Um, that do uh, make it kind of Dark Shadows reminiscent. Maybe even it was slightly inspired by Dark Shadows uh, somewhat. I have no idea. But, I mean, the first books came out in 1991. There was the Dark Shadows revival series going on at that time, so maybe. But, anyway. Um, what did I rate these books? So... Volume 1, um, now my rating system probably won't compare to what my rating system is for the whole thing because I'm going to give uh, a couple ratings here. So I th I think for Volume 1 I gave it 3 stars because it was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I, you know, I liked it well enough. And then uh, Volume 2... I think I also gave it three stars. I liked it a little better, a little bit better. There was, uh, it was, the story was moving along and stuff. Volume three, I gave four stars. Absolutely loved it. There was character development, which is even more of a hint that these books are really meant to be read together because you do get the character development as you go. Um, so, and it, it, you know, it was an awesome volume. And then volume four, which course its own thing pretty much I give it four stars because it was also really good um, but as a whole what would I rate these books I would probably give these books all four together uh, four stars it was definitely enjoyable I'm glad that I read them um, and this is time for a little special thanks here to uh, Zach at Shadyside Library because he kind of championed me on reading these uh, reading the series to keep on with it because otherwise um, you know me in series is I have a hard time finishing them or they take a really long time and I started this like what back in March so I've read four volumes since March so um, yeah uh, so thank you Zach for uh, kind of championing me on there and I definitely recommend these books um, because uh, I think they were pretty exciting. They, they were really slow and hard. They had kind of a slow and rough start to them, but I think they ended pretty well. And um, the, sh the books clearly continue. I th I'm kind of glad they do because I feel like the way the fourth book ended 
I think we needed something more. I think that was the intention was to continue them anyway. So I will continue uh, with the next series. I don't know when. We'll see. But anyway, so that is my review uh, of the, all these books. It, it was a different kind of review, really. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope everybody's having a great June. I'm actually filming this at the end of uh, May. And uh, yeah, so stay safe, stay spooky. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon.